Welcome to your Algebra 2, Lesson 4.8. You're going to learn how to use the quadratic formula and something called the discriminant. So your big objective today is to be able to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. So we've already talked about solving quadratics equations by factoring and using the zero product property, and that's great when we can do it, but there's sometimes when we have a prime quadratic, and so we can't use that. We've talked about um, solving by taking the square root of both sides, um, and that's great when you don't have a linear term. When you have a linear term, if you want to do that, you have to use completing the square. And now today we're going to add another method that works for every occasion, and that is using the quadratic formula. So when we complete the square for ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, we actually get the quadratic formula, which is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And yes, you need to know that. So we are going to solve x squared plus 3x equals 2. To use the quadratic formula, we need the quadratic in standard form, so we needed an ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero form. So we're going to subtract that two over and get x squared plus three x minus two equals zero. And then we identify a, b, and c. a is one, b is three, c is negative two, and we're going to plug that into our formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. So plugging in, we get x equals negative 3 plus or minus 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 2 all over 2 times 1. We're going to simplify. So 3 squared is 9. 4 times negative 2 times 1 times negative 2 is negative 8. 9 minus negative 8 is the same thing as 9 plus 8. And so we get 17 in our radicand. So we have negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. 17 does not have any perfect square factors. In fact, it's a prime number. So we can't simplify that square root any further. And so we have our two solutions. The solutions are negative 3 plus or minus square root of 17 over 2. Um, you can write it as two separate solutions, the plus square root of 17 and then the minus square root of 17. They do show the answers here um, rounded to the nearest hundredth. I want you to leave your answers in simplest radical form. So I want square roots in your answers, unless it's a word problem. With a word problem, um, we really want some sort of estimate of the size, and so if there's square roots involved for a word problem, you can go ahead and round to the, to the nearest um, hundredth would be fine. All right, so here they do show that you can check by putting this in your graphing calculator and finding the x-intercepts, the zeros, and see that they are the same. If you're going to do that, you do want to um, estimate the decimal equivalent of the answers just so you can make that comparison. Okay, we're going to solve 25x squared minus 18x equals 12x minus 9. So to use quadratic formula, of course, after you write the original equation, you want to put this in standard form. So we want to subtract the 12x over and add the 9 over. And so we'll get 25x squared minus 30x plus 9 equals 0. So that gives us a equals 25, b equals negative 30, c equals 9. Plug that into our formula, and we get x equals, well, negative negative 30 is 30, so 30 plus or minus the square root of negative 30, the whole thing squared. So when you go to simplify that, if you're going to put it in your calculator, you need to put it just like it's written there with the parentheses, because you want to tell your calculator you want negative 30 times negative 30. So negative 30, the whole thing squared, minus 4 times 25 times 9, all over 2 times 25. We want to simplify, so we get 30 plus or minus negative 30 times negative 30 is 900. 4 times 25 is 100 times 9 is 900. So we have 900 minus 900, which is 0 over 50. So we're going to simplify. The square root of 0 is just 0, and so we get 30 plus or minus 0 over 50. So 30 plus 0 is 30, 30 minus 0 is 30, so we just get 30 over 50, which will then reduce to 3 fifths. So we have a double 0. We have a double 0 of 3 fifths. And you look here, 
and it shows us when we look at the calculator that the, the only x-intercept, the only zero, is at 0.6, and it is one that's approached from two sides, and so that confirms that this is a double zero. Okay, our last example for this video, and then we'll stop and move to video two, we've got negative x squared plus 4x equals 5. So, of course, you write down the original equation and then immediately put it in standard form. So, I need to subtract that 5 over to get negative x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. And then I identify a, b, and c. a is negative 1, b is 4, c is negative 5. So, now I'm going to plug it into the quadratic formula. So, we get x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 5 all over 2 times negative 1. And then we're going to simplify. So we have negative 4 plus or minus 4 squared is 16. And then we're going to subtract 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 times negative 5 is, negative, is positive 20. So we have 16 minus 20, which is negative 4. Okay, so we're going to simplify. And when you simplify and you have a negative inside your square root sign, you put your eye out. Okay, and so we know it's going to be in terms of i, and then the square root of 4 is 2. Now, any time you have a complex number, you want to separate your real component and your imaginary component. So we're going to split it up as negative 4 over negative 2 plus or minus 2i over negative 2. And then we reduce. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. And then the plus or minus 2i divided by negative 2 is going to give you um, negative i. But notice we just write plus or minus i because all it did was the 2i divided by negative 2, that made the positive the negative one and then the negative one the positive one. So it, it gets absorbed, that negative gets absorbed in the plus or minus. So we have 2 plus or minus i. So we've got two solutions, 2 plus i and 2 minus i. Okay, that's it for video one. Um, Come back for video two and we'll talk about the discriminant and then we're going to look at launched objects. We talked about dropped objects before, now we're going to look at objects that are launched.